Hello and welcome to the fifth video in my Java tutorial series. So in this video, we're going to be talking about comparison operators. Uh, so like greater than, less than, equal to, not. We're going to be talking about chaining conditionals together, uh, which you'll see if you don't really understand what that is right now throughout the video, and how we can use those Boolean variables to do certain things for us. So that's what we talked about in the first few videos. And if you guys don't really know what the point of Boolean is, well, this video will show you. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm just going to start off by typing a few numbers here because it's just the easiest way to compare things uh, to start and then we'll do some other stuff. So I'm just going to create three variables uh, that are integers. Uh, X is six, Y is seven and Z is 10. Now I'm going to create a Boolean variable. So Boolean, uh, let's call it compare and we'll just set that blank for right now. So what I want to do is I want to compare X and Y and Z uh, using some different comparison operators. So in Java, I'm going to write them out here. Uh, we have, I believe, four main comparison operators, four or five. So I'll type them out and we can see. So the first one is greater than, and then we have less than, we have equal to, oops, we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and not equal to. Now, I know I just went through those fast, but they're pretty straightforward. This is simply going to state whether something is greater than the other thing. This is less than the other thing or whatever way you have it, right? Uh, this is is equal to. So the double equal sign is different than the single equal sign. Double equal sign is when you're comparing two values uh, to see if they're the same. And the single equal sign like this one here is if you're assigning a value. So make sure you remember that because a lot of people when they compare things, uh, they forget to add the other equal sign and they just use one and they end up running into some issues. Okay, so greater than or equal to, pretty straightforward, less than or equal to, same thing, and not equal to is an exclamation point and an equal sign. Now I'm going to go through these and show what all these do. So I guess actually I'll leave that there. And because I just remember that I have been forgetting to teach you this, uh, if you do two slashes in Java, this stands for a comment. And a comment is simply something that the computer is going to ignore. And it's, sim it's just there for the uh, the programmer so that they can look at it and be like, okay, this is what this line of code does. Um, whatever, the, the computer doesn't care. So whenever it sees a line that has starts with two slashes, this is how you do a comment. Uh, it just ignores that line and moves on. So that's simply what a comment is. And it just grays out in here to show us that that's a comment. Okay, so compare. So I'm going to compare X and Y. And I want to say see if X is less than Y. So say if X is less than Y. And what this statement right here that we're typing here is gonna return a value of either true or false. So we can look at this, we say, well, six, is that less than seven? Yes, it is, so that should give us a value of true. So if we print compare to the screen, then you can see we get true like that. Now, if I flip this around and I say greater than, okay, what do you think we're gonna get? Well, we get false it's pretty straightforward. To compare the two values to see if they're the same, we can do two equal signs, and in this case we get false. And now this, this comparison operator, some people get confused by, but if I do not equal to, what this is gonna tell me is if the two values, so on the left side and the right side of the comparison operator, are not the same. So if they're not the same, I get true. If they are the same, I get false. So in this case, they're not the same, so we should be getting true, okay? And I guess I could show you greater than or equal to, but they're pretty straightforward in terms of how they work, uh, at least on numbers, okay? Now, these work fine, so greater than or equal to, less than or equal to on numbers, but what if I wanna compare strings? So I'm just gonna change uh, X and Y, I'm just gonna make two strings here. I'll say, oops, uh, string X, uh, we'll say hello, and string Y, and this is equal to hi, okay? So see now I'm getting this blurred out or this red line here. It's saying the comparison operator uh, greater than or equal to is undefined for strings. So the only ones that I'm allowed to do on strings, at least for right now that we're gonna talk about are two equal signs or not equal to, okay? And not equal to is simply gonna say, right? Uh, if the strings are not the same and if they are the same. So in this case, I say not the same, I'm gonna get true. If I try to see, say if they are the same, I get false. Now I want to just show you one thing here. If I type hello and I add a capital O at the end of hello like this, do we think that this is the same as hello with all lower cases or not? Well, I'll show you. Uh, it is not. So capital letters do matter uh, in programming, right? And that's the same with variable names. Like the capital variable Y is different than the lowercase variable Y. Okay. So that's how we can compare those. And I want to see actually, can we use greater than? No, we can't use greater than or less than on strings either. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do now is I want to chain multiple conditions together. So I'm going to show you the AND operator, the OR operator, and the NOT operator. And these are how we can add multiple conditions together to get one like main condition, if that makes sense. So I'm going to change these back to uh, two numbers. It might be faster just to type them out. Uh, int x equals, what did I have? 6. Int y equals, let's just do like 23. Why not? Okay. So now I'm going to compare uh, multiple things at once. So I first want to compare if x is greater than y, but I also want to compare if z is greater than x. Say I want to check two things, perfectly viable. In many cases, you'd want to do that. The way that we can do that in Java to compare if two things are the same is using this AND operator. And the AND operator is looks like this. So it's these two AND signs, okay? And then we have to add another condition after this. In this case, I'm going to say if Z is, let's just say Z is less than Y, okay? You can see that's fine. We're not getting any red lines. And what this does is it's going to compare the operation on the left side. It's going to do the comparison on the right side. And then we're going to end up getting two values. So in this case, X is greater than Y. So six, is that greater than Y? No, we're going to get false. So I'll just type it out as if uh, this is what's happening in the computer, right? And then is Z less than Y? Yes, it is. So we get true like this, okay? Now, we have a false and we have a true, but we have this and operator in between them. What this and operator is going to do is it's going to check if both of the conditions on the left side and the right side are true. If they are both true, it returns true to us. If they are both, or if one of them is false or both of them are false, then we get a false value. So in this case, since this one is false, we're going to get a false value because both of them have to be true for this to evaluate uh, to true. So I'll show you if I do this. Okay, and I print this to the screen, you can see we get a false value because this is saying if this and this are true, then the whole thing is true. Okay, now another operator that we have is the or operator. And the or operator is two straight up lines like this. I don't know what they're actually called, uh, the key for that, but anyways. So this is going to do kind of, it's similar to and, but in the other way around. If one of the two conditions are true, the whole thing is going to be true. Otherwise, if both of them are false, it's false, right? So the way that uh, we can determine this again, right, is we'll do this condition, we'll see what this is equal to, and then we'll see what this is equal to. And if one of them are true, we get a true value. So let's run, and there we go. You see, we get a true value. Now, we have a not operator. Now, what not does is simply going to reverse anything. And this is the way I like to think about it. Whatever you have, if you see the not, just reverse it. So what this does is it's going to say if this condition is not true, then we get uh, false. Or if this condition is false, sorry, so not true, then we get true. Other way around, if this condition is true, then it's false. Because it's checking if it's not true. I hope that makes sense. You kind of just have to play with it to make sense of it. But in this case, since we get a true value, and we have this exclamation point, which is our not operator, uh, it is going to give us false. So you can see here, we get false. Now, if in here I were to put a false value, so uh, let's literally, I'll just show you by typing in the value. I say not and then false in there. You can see that we get a true value. So it simply just reverses like anything that you're looking at. Now, I want to show you that we can actually combine all of these operators together. So what we can do is we can use like ands and ors and we can have an infinitely long chain of a condition uh, that will eventually evaluate to true. Now, this is actually some kind of like math problems you have to do. Typically in university, I'm going to have to do it next semester uh, where you have like a ton of different conditions and you have to figure out if you're going to get true or false based on them. So I'll show you like a pretty basic example. So I'll say if X is less than Y uh, and Y is greater than Z or uh, Z plus two is less than five or uh, what do you call it? Like X plus seven is greater than Y. Okay, so I just typed a bunch of conditions, right? How do we determine which ones, of, which of these are going to evaluate first? Well, that is a good question. And typically you'd never type it like this because just looking at this, like even I'm looking at it right now after I just typed it and I'm like, wow, okay. How do I determine uh, which one of these is going to happen first? Typically you put things in brackets. So I would say something like this. It's like X and Y. Okay, so I have this first condition now, right? You put in brackets, it's going to evaluate this. And in this case, we'll get, I'm not going to bother doing the actual evaluation, but let's say we get true. Okay. Or, so we have true or whatever this evaluated with this is. So what this is going to do now is it's going to look at Z plus two, if that's less than five, 
if that's true, then we get true or, and then whatever this is, and then we could treat this as if this is in brackets like this. Okay. So now the way that this would work is we do everything in brackets here. We'd get a value of like true or false. We do everything in brackets here. We get a value of true or false. And then we'd see if either of them are true and return that value. So you know what? Let's just print it to see what we get. Uh, we get true. Okay. I don't even know uh, how that worked to be honest. And yeah, that's how we could do that. And we can also throw knots in here too. So if I wanted to throw a knot like this, then we can do that. Now, typically you're not going to see massive chain conditionals like this because of the exact problem we're running into. It's difficult to determine what they are by just reading it. Uh, and you'll see when we go into if and else statements in the next video, how we can use these conditions to evaluate certain things. I just wanted to show you that you can combine multiple things. And for example, I don't only have to use variables. You can see that here I put Z plus two less than five. That's a perfectly valid condition that works perfectly fine. Could change this is equal to five, right? Um, you can add constants. Like I could just say two is equal to five if I wanted to, but that's fine. You can compare with constants and with strings. Just remember you can do less than or equal to, or sorry, not less than, not, the, not equal to or equal to, and you can compare floats with ints and you'll see as we continue going through the video, it's too long to go through all of them right now. Anyways, that has been it for this video. In the next video, we're going to get into if, else, and else statements. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like, and I will see you in the next one.